starting point here is the civil service is getting smaller. Um, we got this financial problem, um, the big budget deficit, it's budget deficit getting smaller, but we've still got a substantial one. And you know, the plans that all the departments have got show that by 2015 the civil service is going to be significantly smaller. Um, and I think what that's done is highlighted some issues that need to be addressed. And it makes it more urgent that we um, ad address the, the, the weaknesses that there are and sharpen the accountability as well. I think what's in it for civil servants is that we're going to hang on to the things that they like. Mm. So the interesting work that makes a difference, mm. the civil service values that yep. people put a lot of store on. But we're going to tackle some of the things that frustrate and get in the way. So we are going to get clearer processes of managing performance. We are going to tackle some of the uh, barriers uh, to people doing their jobs. Um, and we are going to reward and uh, recognize mm. those people who do a, a good mm. job. And crucially, we're going to work much more as a unified mm. civil service, uh, working together to improve and using the best as the guide uh, for everybody. And that sense of um, the capabilities, you know, too many projects in government um, don't get done right, but actually some get done absolutely brilliantly. Look at the Olympics. It's been a really well-run project, you know, touch wood, but not quite there yet, but it's all looking really good. And we need to see how we can make that kind of approach, which is a model really, in any part of, um, in any private sector anyway, would be proud of how that's been done. See how that approach can be replicated across the system. I think that's right. I also think uh, what we need to do is ensure we've got the right skills yeah. uh, for people to do the job. Yeah. And what I think we've learned through this plan is that nobody is a, a, a generalist now. Everyone has mm. to have skills to do the job that they're being asked to do. Um, we need to properly invest in doing that. Mm. And so having this uh, plan to identify where we're strong and weak, uh, do it across the civil mm. service and, and organise it over the next five years, I think is critically important. Yeah. And it's things like um, project leadership yeah. skills, um, commercial skills, the ability to deal with suppliers when we're commissioning more services from outside. Yeah. Um, and digital skills, and we're going to become a really much more digital organisation. We need yeah, more of absolutely. those skills within government. And I think we can learn from areas that have got stronger. When I first uh, came across the civil service, I think it was pretty uneven on things like finance and, and, and human resources management. We can see a lot more professionalising of that mm. over time. And that shows the way, I think, to how we can also strengthen the areas you've described uh, in the future as well. And I think you've often made the point um, that we need to be a more unified civil mm -hmm. service uh, with uh, more corporate management of talent, for example, the yeah. development of, of talent, but also things like uh, how do we do property, how do we do the mm -hmm. ICT uh, infrastructure, making that work, um, work much better. Yeah, and I think what we mean by corporate here is not everything being done in the centre, no. but actually leadership across the civil service. Yeah. So if we've got a really strong professional leader in another department, let's say, on information mm. technology, that person can be the leader on that agenda across mm. the whole of, of government. And we're doing that with HR, we're yeah. doing that with uh, ICT, yeah. procurement, we're doing much more in a much more corporate and collegiate um, way, and that really makes sense. I think one of the other things that's really powerful now is that we have centres of excellence and expertise, mm. like the Major Projects Leadership Academy. Yeah. And they can be a resource for the whole of the civil service to raise our game in these critical areas. Yeah, no, I think all, all of that's right. Um, so I think there's lots of, lots of things we need to do. Um, employment offer. I mean, mm. the civil service is a really good employer, but we know that people have seen there's been a pay freeze um, with reforming pensions, and this feels quite painful uh, for a lot of staff. Yeah, I think it's important that we recognise that yeah. people have had to go through quite a lot of change. They've seen the reductions in size of numbers and they've seen changes, you say, around pay and pensions. But I think our ambition uh, is to continue to be a good employer, a good modern employer. Mm. We can't be an outlier. We have to recognise that the world is changing for the whole of the public mm. and private sector at the moment. But we want to be seen as a good employer that provides interesting work mm 
that makes a real difference to people's lives. And I think having a very clear, positive offer in the plan is an important part of, of what we're doing here. And of course, one of the things we're going to complete is the review the Cabinet Office is leading, but working very closely with departments on looking to see uh, what uh, bits of government we can do a bit differently. Um, whether that's seeing whether staff want to form themselves into a mutual. Mm -hmm. We saw recently with MyCSP, the organisation mm -hmm. that yeah, yeah. administers the civil service pension scheme, a million and a half members, every civil servant's a member, plus all the retired ones mm -hmm. and people who've left um, and are working elsewhere. And the staff there uh, now own 25% uh, of the organisation that's doing that work. And actually, we're just announcing that they've won more business. I mean, that organisation has won some, biz some other contracts uh, from other pension schemes. And so we're looking to see where we can do things very differently. But always, very much at the front of our minds, is actually the involvement of staff themselves. Yeah. I think that's uh, going to be the way forward. We've got to, in a sense, harness people's creativity uh, and innovation. And part of that is being up for different delivery yeah. models. Uh, it's not saying that there's one way, way of doing it and that's the right way of doing it. Mm. It's being prepared to look at things differently mm. to get better solutions in terms of delivery of the service. And when we're in a period where money's tight, there's an absolute premium on being creative and innovative in what you do mm. and the way you organise your services. And, and I know people will always ask with any civil mm. service reform plan, why is this going to be different? And I think mm. the point is here that there isn't any choice. You know, civil service is getting smaller and it's got to do things better. The public's expectations are, are, are much higher, so we have to do this. And you know, one of the reasons why I, I'm really confident we can do this is there's complete political commitment. The other thing is, frankly, you know, you've got a real track record of delivering change, and you've run big organisations, you've seen through change, you know, what, you know it's difficult, and you know it requires complete persistence, and it requires um, getting uh, the support from the organisation itself, from the leadership, but also from civil servants themselves. And I think we both feel, having worked through this intensely, to get to the point where we've got these agreed actions, which I think everyone thinks, yeah, that's really going to make a difference. We can sh show to people that this will make their lives in their uh, work better and more satisfying and enable them to get stuff done and also give the public the services that they need. I think one of the things we have in common is a dislike of long papers yeah. and the second thing is uh, an absolute desire to make things happen yeah. uh, and I think that's one key feature but I'd add to that really that we've put a lot of effort into uh, picking up what people feel, what civil servants themselves feel, yeah. what senior managers mm. feel. So what's in here actually is what other people have told us is important uh, and I think that will help get people behind it its delivery. But I agree with you, we don't really have a choice if we want to keep the reputation of the civil service in a world that is very uh, challenging and changing. Mm -hmm.